Good evening and welcome to our live discussion. I'm your host, Nadine Spence. Tonight, we examine the current realities as well as a way forward for water access and distribution in Jamaica. To discuss, we are joined by President of the National Water Commission, Mr. Lloyd Barnett. Mr. Mark, Mark Barnett. <laughs> I'm making you into a lawyer. Yes. Mark. Um, so talk to me now. I know yesterday was a big day in Parliament for you in terms of um, presentation be, be, before the standing finance, stand, the standing finance committee mm -hmm. on matters related to water right. and access to water and distribution of water. Right. And I know that whenever we hear about water, even though I myself must declare as chair woman of the Water Resource Authority Board. When people talk about water, they automatically go to I National know, Water Commission. So I'm, I'm going to pretend that I don't know. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> and I don't know you. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this matter of water right. and, and your important role, your role as NWC in right. ensuring that. Because I think people are concerned about how we get to the point of portable water. Now, one of the things that we always hear people talk about, Mark, is do we have enough water in Jamaica for us to have enough access to portable water, especially in times of drought? In mm -hmm. other words, do we always have to wait on the rain, or are we relying solely on rainfall for, to access water that is consumable? Thanks, Nadine. Uh, well, so in a nutshell, we do have enough water in Jamaica, um, and this is based on even the recent uh, master plan from the Water Resources Authority. I believe our challenge is where water is, people don't necessarily are, let's say the majority of the population doesn't live there. So the question is how do we move it? But in addition to that, Jamaica's water is really produced through one source, unlike most other uh, countries, and it's through precipitation, others have snow, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we don't have any of that. So yes, rainfall is very important for us to replenish the freshwater resources. Uh, but in general, Jamaica do have enough freshwater resources to satisfy the, the needs and the demands of the population. Uh, from an NWC perspective, we do produce uh, adequate water, our challenge, and I would be the first to say that, is it's just the, the, the quality of our network that ensure that we uh, deliver maximum from what we abstract and, and treat to distribute. And I think that's where the investment needs to be uh, focused as well, notwithstanding that we still do need uh, new capacities, meaning new treatment facility, because the work of uh, improving the efficiency of your network is a long process. It's not a short-term ac activity. So from those... Uh, initiatives, I believe we, we can see a much improved uh, water distribution and a more sustained supply to ensure that even in the worst uh, case of drought, we do can satisfy the demand of our population. Hence the reason, and I'm sorry that I might be preempting <laughs> you, hence the reason we invested heavily in NRW in Kingston, and now we're doing the same in, in, in non-revenue water. My mm -hmm. apologies. We in the industry always just delve into the acronyms rather than give the full definition. Uh, non-revenue water, we, we did a successful program in And Kingston. what is non-revenue water? It's really water that you produce but re receive no revenue from. It's either leak, stolen, or, you know, under registration of meters, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a number of different uh, variables that make up that simple acronym, really, or this simple quantum. So we're doing Portmore. But we also recognize as part of the strategy that the NRW in itself will not solve the entire problem. And I know, especially now that we have a drought, the population is going to ask, So let's what talk are about planning? that. Yeah. You talked about the distribution issue. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what are we doing to fix that? We have enough water, yeah. but during times of drought, we, people, Right. talk about just the drama they have to go through to get water. And people blame you a lot. All the time. Because we don't know when NWC go and lock off the water, <laughs> the NWC lock off the water yes. how long. And it, but that is mostly around Kingston, St. Andrew, and the other and parts, parts of, parts the, of uh, St. Uh, Catherine. Uh, uh, Negril does have an, a section of Hanover, West Milan. Why isn't it, why is it like that? Because I know that when I lived in St. James, we yeah. never had as much water lock-offs. We never had 
at, at least to me at the time. Yeah. Why is it that there seem to be that some parts are more impacted than others? And what is it that mm -hmm. about the distribution system that allows for that? So the, the distribution system is important for the, for the efficient supply of the commodity. And uh, part of that is it requires the it requires a network that is reliable and efficient in its delivery. Hence the, hence the, the decision to invest. But you would also recognize, and, and, and it is never mentioned any at all in the last three to four years, there about, there was no cry about mm -hmm. water lock off. And it is a testimon, testimon, testimony to the, <coughs> to the level of investment we would have done in the, in, in the network. Uh, that would re result in one lower production of uh, water because when you do an RW, you don't need to produce as much. You yeah. actually produce a, a, sig a significantly less amount of water to satisfy the immediate demand. So we were actually, prior to this onset of the drought, we were actually producing less water under normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. And in the previous situation, we would have been producing more. Hence, we would have probably been in a worse situation than we are now, um, had we not done those works. But it, it, in essence, NWC is looking at doing quite a number of things. We may not necessarily be the best in promoting what we do, uh, but massively we're looking at island-wide non-revenue water because irrespective of the sources that you develop and put on, on the system. So, and that is usually the cry. Why don't we add more sources? Why don't we? But if you're already losing 60% plus of the water that you produce, any source that you add on your infrastructure, you're going to lose 60% well, anyway. And you say it's a, that's a non-revenue water that's thing. The non -revenue and water. you are trying to plug that loss. Uh, we have to plug that loss, mm -hmm. make an assessment of what is the shortfall if there's any after that plugging of those losses. And then it really, then you will invest to make up that shortfall. So if you go and invest now, for example, in a 30 million gallon, gallon water facility, you may not need to do that investment if you plug those losses, and then you will now possibly do a 10 or a 15 million gallon uh, investment. So you're making savings on both ends of, of how, the How of far the are we along that you know, road of plugging the losses? What, what, is the, what are right. the big ticket items that you're looking at towards plugging those losses? So we, we, as I indicated, we have to, so right now where we are in the process, we have just now take the island-wide project, which estimated to cost us over 45 or so billion dollars in investment, which will take about 15 years in, in the process. But we expect to see returns in the first seven years of, the, of, its sorry, of its execution. So first, it's about dealing with your losses in all parishes. So you have to do a comprehensive non-revenue water for all parishes. It's pointless doing one year, one year, because when you fix something in one area, it is actually create, there's actually the other areas that need to be addressed simultaneously. And, and that is the first uh, step. Notwithstanding, we're still going ahead and we're putting in the Raya Cobra facility, uh, which will bring about an additional 15 imperial million gallons of water into the corporate area, Portmore and Spanish Town that we believe would substantially reduce any impact of any drought situation. And we know there are uh, cries as it relates to new sources. We also know that So Rio Cobra to you, Rio Cobra is, is already being developed as a new source? Rio Cobra now, mm -hmm. we are at the stage of the, it's a public-private partnership mm -hmm. that we are entering in. And where we are now, the private sector consortium is doing the, is going through the approval process. We are anticipating groundbreaking to uh, to be in May this year, mm -hmm. and it will take us probably 18 to 20 months to complete that uh, 15 million gallon facility. And immediately thereafter, there will be significant benefits to the population uh, of the metropolis, if you will, Kingston and Saint Andrew. St. Catherine, Portmore. Kingston and St. Andrew presents a challenge in, in, this, in, the, in the fact of you needing to bring water in. Yeah. Because the water table in Kingston is not 
able well, to be accessed so that it can help with <laughs> the problem that Kingston and St. Andrew faces. Very good observation. Because you see, oftentimes when we speak about water, water Remember resources. Remember presenting that, I know. No? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have to, on a, as a concerted effort, uh, supported by GOJ, we must sew, lay sewer pipe across the length and breadth of the corporate area. We have an aquifer that we are unable to maximize its productive capacity. So you're looking at a trench town, trench town well that we usually operate. We have to stop using it because it is high in nitrates. Uh, that's almost a million and a half gallons of water that could be served in that lower section of St. Andrew. And why weren't, why weren't we doing that? Why weren't we making sure that we were protecting the aquifer hmm. in Kingston? What, what what you know, I, I, I must say um, I'm relatively young in the process, <laughs> I must say that. Um, but I believe our planning and how we execute on, on, on those activities were not in concert in protecting those resources as we should. Yes, we would have laid so as on certain major corridors, but uh, look, when you have majority of the household having septic tank absorption pits, and some probably don't even have a septic tank, you're going to have that level of infiltration in your underground mm -hmm. aquifer, which then pollutes the whole uh, water table, and that creates its own deficiency. So by virtue of our own action, we create a deficiency in supply. And what we are now forced to do is to find additional sources, but I believe if we make the investment, which is a long-term investment, we can resuscitate those aquifers and start to generate probably six, eight million gallons of water additional into the city. In fact, it may not even require us to pump those wells continuously. Because even while when we, you know, in the last few months, when we had normal su supply, a lot of the wells that we normally pump, or a few of the wells that we normally pump, we rested yeah. them mm -hmm. for virtue of having um, good supplies. So, and then, so, so we're talking about the unequal distribution island-wide, mm -hmm. that some places are, are, are experiencing water shortage right. and water lock-off. Some places right. are quite okay with the supply. Yes. So we're talking about the distribution uh, yes. We tend to center our conversation Around on Kingston, Kingston and, and, and It's unfair in a lot of sense yeah. because I know, you know, there are other parishes that up to today, some people don't even have pipe network to get running water, which is, you know, what Kingston and St. Andrew may have benefited from for years. And so you're correct. And that is part of the reason why even in those circumstances, NWC is also investing in some of these communities to extend water supply to these communities. Are where there were services in the past because of growth in population, etc. It may become inadequate. We are upgrading those systems as well. Are we working from behind the eight ball? Or are we trying? To, are we trying to catch up? How are, how are we doing this? Are we? Are we still playing catch up? Are we near anywhere where we could say? You know, we look, we see the problem, it look like mm -hmm. we, we grasp it and we know we, we are inching close to it and there will come a time when we will be yeah. ahead of it. You know? I, I think we've always grasped the, the, the problem. I, 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 I believe based on my own um, information, it was just the availability of the resource to invest. And a water supply system is not an investment that you do now and you leave it for the next 50 years. It's an infrastructure that you have to be consistently investing in to ensure that it serves the population now and those to come. And so you may say, yes, we have some way to go, but the, 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 the situation was always understood. We have various studies, um, and I know people don't necessarily like to hear about studies, but the fact that they were studied, it simply means somebody has the foresight to look at solutions that could be implemented. The question, therefore, is these were never implemented because of various reasons, lack of resources, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact as well, as a government entity, there's always going to be those challenges of people, even when the best of time mm -hmm. receiving the, the commodity don't necessarily like to pay for it. And, and that's, a, that's an area that we have to tackle based on the social issues surrounding supply of water. So if I can use my knowledge now, the water sector is not just the Water Commission. It's not. We have Absolutely the not. agricultural yes. 
um, enti the entity that looks after water for agricultural yes. purposes. Uh, and I, I know that's not your primary focus, but you know as well. So I'm from St. Elizabeth, <laughs> and I know that, you know, one of the challenges we face in certain parts of St. Elizabeth, not yes. my part, my part have flood. Your, your part is the my is part the is, <laughs> My part have too much water, but over the south side, yes. they don't have enough water. And you and I were talking earlier yes. about St. Elizabeth's unique, unique reality, yes. you know? And so while we might not be talking about domestic water in St. Elizabeth, we're talking about agricultural, agricultural water. Yes. How, how, how do you you interface with that, do you? Oh yeah, well, um, by virtue of the fact that NWC may have the most extensive water supply network in the parish, it does face its challenges uh, in terms of uh, water that was intended for domestic uh, portable uses ended up using for agricultural purposes. Mm -hmm. So we have our challenges, it's one of the most I would say it's one of the most challenging parishes as it relates to uh, supply of water. But in fact, you know, I, Saint Elizabeth is a predominant is a parish that predominantly will get its water from underground sources, and I don't think there's a shortage of water in Saint Elizabeth. It's just a matter of how the network is, and how do we develop irrigation separate from portable, and whether we will have twin enough uh, distribution system to serve the various um, demands for agriculture. And the fact is, just quickly, you will recall, you, you're from St. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. so you recognize that most of the households do farming on plot. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you have a water supply connection, invariably it is going to be used for so agriculture, agriculture as well as domestic. Domestics. So there goes the interface. All right, so thank you very much. I, I think we need, to have, we need to have more of these conversations about water, especially now, but we thank you so much for the significant contribution tonight to our understanding yes. of how the water system in Jamaica is working yes. and is improving. We take a break now. When we come back, we have our sports package.